Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today it is time on the second dev server for update 1.97 to have a look at the CV90 105 TML. This is the new pre-order vehicle which is available for the Swedish ground forces in update 1.97 and it joins the other two, the SDRV 1030 and the SAV 201248 as one of those vehicles you can buy in order to get early access or CBT access to the Swedish tech tree once update 1.97 1.97 drops. So when it comes to the CV90105, this right now is a $60 vehicle. I'm not going to tell you whether to buy it or not, so I'm just going to give you the stats and generally my opinion on it. So when it comes to this vehicle, the CV90105, it joins a long list of other vehicles at rank 6, battle rating 9.0 or above or below, which are these top ranking premiums. So they're not top, top ranking technically because rank 7 exists, but they're good at being able to research the whole of the tech tree. Yeah. So the CV90105 has a 678% RP uh, on it when you have premium running, and this is able to research effectively all of the vehicles in the tech tree. So its maximum efficiency will be reached at everything because the way that premiums work is it's a tier above and and all of the tiers below. So this thing can grant you this whole tech tree if you want to get to top tier incredibly quickly and also have very much a top tier experience. The CV90105 has all of the bells and whistles of a top ranking vehicle, has access to APFSDS in the form of the M735, which is what its default round is to only get upgraded to the DM23. Remember, as a premium vehicle, all of this comes spaded. So this vehicle you get is a really, you know, chock a block full of wonderful stuff. Gets DM12 as a heat FS round, 400, 346, and 200 millimeters respectively when it comes to penetration. Even gets a hair shell for its 105 millimeter and the DM23 with the beautiful pen at 9.0, some may even call it a lol pen round. The CV90105 also is the first top ranking premium, which has access to scouting, uh, which is really nice to see. Has the airstrike and improved optics modification. Also gets a laser rangefinder. Also gets thermals. Also gets artillery support and smoke grenades as well. This thing has everything when it comes to mechanics in War Thunder, so you can play it how you want, when you want and how you feel which is just great the only uh, little aspects that it struggles in are aspects such as gun depression only seven degrees uh, generally the standard i personally like is the idea of 10 degrees and also its armor is not great if we have a look at the vehicle we are looking at 20 millimeters around it if we have a look at its effective thickness versus let's say another vehicle which is you know the same rank and the same premium bonusy way of it which fires uh, you know the dm13 round as you can see 24 millimeters worth of armor on that upper glacis uh, sorry lower glacis 75 millimeters on the upper glacis and the turret itself 19 millimeters and uh, 67 or 40 millimeters respectively this thing is not well armored the only thing that it really hopes for is if it can get ricochets and uh, the rounds bounce upwards like that but the majority of the time if you're looking straight at it that's not going to happen it's just going to go straight through it it's going to kill everything and yeah so the armor profile on this machine is pretty terrible which means that it might actually be open to hull break uh, which would be very sad to see but we honestly don't know yet you know what's going to happen with that all we know right now is that its armor is just not very good the only way you're going to do anything is to try and angle as much as possible and even then you're going to come out uh, you're going to come out short the majority of the time the vehicle is quite low uh, which is nice and it also has the standard four man crew it's got the driver on the right hand side as you can see there and also the three man crew in the turret in the form of the loader commander and also gunner the first stage ammo storage is 12 pieces and it isn't just the ammunition that you see here it's also a rack around the loader and that means that if you penetrate the turret or around the turret 
you have a chance of hitting this like line of uh, AP shells, or sorry, line of shells which are just sat here, meaning that it could go up at any moment. It's definitely not great. It's also got some rolled homogenous armor in the middle, only 10 millimeters though, so that ain't saving anybody. And then it has this uh, wackadoo uh, set of uh, stuff going along the side of it, which I believe is part of the radiator, if I remember correctly. Has some more rolled homogenous armor on the front. All this is going to do is ignite rounds it's not going to do anything else fuel tank on the outside which is lovely and a bunch of ammunition in the booty since this thing is supposed to be not just you know a uh, not just a vehicle that can kill tanks it's also supposed to carry in, uh, individuals and well why not uh, just replace them with ammunition when it comes to the vehicle looking at the engine it's a scania dsi 14 gives 550 horsepower so a pretty beefy engine for what this machine is and also the transmission is the perkins x300 it's an automatic one which is lovely and uh, it has six gears going forward giving it 70 kilometers an hour overall if you can hit it and then backwards three gears four 43 kilometers now so this thing can get you out of trouble if it needs to uh, which is nice mobility is the name of the game when it comes to high it is and this thing has a ton of mobility for it uh, which is just nice to see you can see where the smoke grenades are on this machine as well so uh, that works and at nino so in tank realistic you may think oh well there isn't too many vehicles around this br you can still make a decent lineup at nino if you have a look at aviation you can bring along the a32 a at Nino, which is a pretty nice little vehicle, which has access to good old autom uh, ord ord ordinance, uh, which you can bring into ground realistic. You also have the SDRV 103C, which ha we haven't talked about too much, but this thing should be able to get up to, to 9 fine. I mean, it's already at 8.7. And then you've got, well, this, uh, which, at least for me, um, I've never really enjoyed the, uh, let's call them, M113s or M113 clones, uh, which have access to ATGMs and that's it. They never really tickle my pickle a lot. Instead, you either get gunned down by a plane, or what happens is you just get one shot by a superior vehicle. So it's still at least got some decent vehicles around it. Maybe not that one. And also, it has the ability to be upted pretty well because it's a scout. You know, it has the scouting ability. So it's not just always about killing power. Instead, there are other options that you can take yourself down looking at the camouflages you have the desert camo late the urban deforming camo which is lovely the tricolor one with the black white and green and then the unicolor winter camouflage which of course is just pasty so i think uh, my favorite camo is this one at least out of the bunch maybe the urban decaying camo even though the urban decaying camo probably won't be useful uh, when it comes to the game in general but it is nice to see it you know actually exist so so overall with this machine if you're looking for a top tier experience if you're looking for something which gives you all of the mechanics that you'll find in top tier vehicles this vehicle will give you it you know it has the stabilizer it has the good to rotation it has a good reload once you get your crew uh, you know decently up it's got the good mobility it's got uh, very good rounds it's got the gunner thermals it's got all of the things that you would like to see in a vehicle which is high tier and it's in a 9.0 package in a pre-order bundle. So you can, if you want, you know, just pick it up and get that top tier experience. I'm personally more of a fan of actually grinding through a tech tree to be able to, you know, get uh, used to all of the vehicles and enjoy its whole cloth instead of just individually. But I know there's a lot of people who want to play high tier stuff and this vehicle will definitely get you there. It is another vehicle which is plagued by the new gun sounds, uh, so that is something to you know, think about. But you can see, even running at 47 kilometers an hour, the gun is as stable as it can be. You know, you. Why didn't that pen? Uh, the, the gun is as stable as can be. You can shoot wherever you want, and you can scout wherever you want, or you can use as many thermals as. Uh, or as many thermals and stuff as you want. There is no. Oh, wait. Hold the phone. This thing's got commander's thermals. Commander's thermals and I know. Are we sure about this? Is this a good idea? All right. So this thing doesn't just have gunner's thermals. It also has commander's thermals. Okay, so that's just made the scouting a lot easier. That's also made a lot of the other mechanics a lot easier. 
Bloody hell, alright then. Ooh, beautiful. But yeah, it's uh, it's just a vehicle that has pretty much everything. It's if the, the only thing for me uh, that puts me off this vehicle, and also the grenades do uh, go off in sets, uh, so if you just, you know, tap the button, you can actually cover in front and behind you. Do you see how they're set up on the turret? So you can cover a circle area around you, which is really nice. But what puts me off uh, this vehicle and other vehicles of its ilk is not really a fault of the vehicle. It's more of a fault of me. I'm not a twitch shooter. I'm not a person who uh, is able to like see what's going on all the time and react really quickly to what's going on. And that is why when it comes to top ranking vehicles, I'm generally not very good with them. Because uh, reacting to situations quickly is not what my brain does in War Thunder. What I do is the slow methodical setup and then, and then uh, I try and kind of like uh, set up so my position is better than my opponent's. And then from there, you know, we can duke it out, but I'm in the superior position, therefore I can deal with it. Uh, but when it comes to this vehicle and many others, what you'll end up happening is, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be in those scenarios where you'll be twitch shooting, where you'll be running around corners, uh, dabbing on people, where you'll be, you know, going crazy and firing and waiting for them to push you, and you'll have a lot of good times. You'll also have a lot of bad times where you'll get one tapped and it will feel very annoying, but that's just kind of the nature of what the top tier beast is. The other thing is, since it's 9-0 and not 9-3, you stay out of that top ranking bracket. And I can't stress how nice that actually is. One of the biggest issues when it comes to 9-3, 9-7 vehicles is you get dragged up into 10-3. And as many people have pointed out, including myself, there is definite compression at high, at high BRs, especially when it comes to 10-3. And it's more about compression and mechanics than anything else, but at the end of the day, it still gives you, you know, the same deal. If you are in this vehicle and you're going up against a top tier MBT, it ain't going to feel nice. You know, you're going to get battered and you're just going to go home and just not feel good. But since this thing's at 9-0, it's actually technically at the top of a BR bracket. So 10-3, 9-3, 9-0 to 8-0. And you'll be able to bully a lot of 8.3s and 8.0s and even 8.7s with this vehicle. And at worst, what you're going to do is you're going to come up against a bunch of premium vehicles from other nations. And you should at least be on equal footing with them. Maybe you have the slight advantage because you have scouting, but you have slightly less armor or maybe a slightly slower gun. Therefore, you have, you know, less of a advantage in other areas. It's all about maximizing your advantages and the CV9105 that you see here has many of them. So you can pretty much pick and choose what you want uh, as a strength against whatever the weaknesses of the enemy is. Whether it's mobility, whether it's gun, whether it's any of these wonderful things. Good old pop goes the weasel. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. I just want to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Blackie, Chris Giltnane, Daniel Stanton, J. Wilt, John Ryman, Martinez, Super Cacti, Trigger Hippie, Eugene Terry, and also Elove Goat and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.